Hi, in this video we're going to go through a very basic workflow for creating a book. And in the next video, we're going to go into some more advanced techniques to customize your book and uh, give it that really personalized touch. First, you'll see that I've imported a new project of images from the zoo. I'm going to use uh, many of these to create a book. Before I actually create my book, I like to select my images and put them in an album first where I can organize them and put them in the proper order. So in my case, I'm going to select all of my images. And in your case, you probably won't select every image in a project, just the ones that you like, and then put them in an album. You can click on New here and choose Album, or you can do Command-L. Type in the name and click OK. So now I've created a new album here for my book. I'm going to switch my view by hitting V so I can see all of them. And then I can sort through and kind of rearrange them as I want. So I'll drag some of these to the beginning where right I want them on my title page. And then I might move a few of the elephant shots to the beginning. So you kind of rearrange them as you like. Um, Delete ones that you don't think you'll particularly use. That's yeah, that's mediocre. Um, get them all sorted out. Makes it a lot easier to put them in the book. And when you're ready, select all of the images that you do want to put in your book and choose New Book. Okay. You get to choose your type, uh, mainly what size it is. Apple creates all of these uh, sizes if you're going to order it from them. If you want more details about this information, about what size they all are, click on Options and Prices and it will give you exact dimensions and obviously exact prices. If you're not having order, uh, uh, if you're not having Apple make your book, you can custom create your own size. Um, this is also a nice, nice tool to create your own postcards and things like that, or posters, your own custom things. You can make your own size and then print it yourself. For the time being, I'm going to go with a large Apple book. Of course, you can browse through your themes. I'm going to go with the Modern Lines theme. If you are planning on using maps in your books, only some of these themes work with maps. Modern Lines does not work with maps. So uh, be aware of that as you choose your theme. Play around with them first and see what you like. Time to explore the layout. You'll notice it's created a new book for me under my project on the left side. I don't want to see my inspector right now because I'm not going to need to switch between projects. I'm just working on my book. So I'm going to create some more screen save space by hitting I on my keyboard to hide the inspector and by clicking this little tic-tac button in the top corner to hide the toolbar. And I've got a much more expansive view of my book. So having arranged my layout properly, I can now start adding things to my book. In this basic one, we're just going to use the basic Apple tried and true drag and drop method. From the browser along the bottom, choose your photo and drag it into the gray uh, drop boxes. Be sure to not drop it in the black background because then it goes in as background and not in the actual drop box. So you want the drop box to be blue and let go. Once you've dropped images in, in your browser, they'll show up with a red icon here badge indicating how many times they've shown up in your book. If it doesn't have a badge, it means it's not in your book. As you might have guessed, you can double click on the titles to spell things properly. Oops, and enter in your text. You have your uh, uh, arrows here to move to the next pages. Or uh, if you have a trackpad or a magic mouse, you can just swipe three fingers to go through your different pages. Uh, also along the bottom you have the option to view it as a full spread, two pages at a time, or just one page at a time depending on your detail. On the opposite corner you have your zoom control so you can get real close and read the text uh, if it's really tiny. This button will scale it to fit your window again. So we'll continue by dragging a few images in. Again, double click on the text to add what you would like and move on to the next pages. Once you get to a page that you decide um, 
doesn't look quite the way you want it to by default. You go over to your um, project view over here and click on this little disclosure triangle and it will show you what we call the master pages. These are all the default setups uh, that come with a particular theme. So in this one I could choose a one page on the, on the side or two images vertical, two images horizontal, etc. I'm just going to choose a single half up. You'll notice it's rearranged my page over here for me so now I can drag in an image that I like. Um, I'll do the same over here with monkey. keep going. This is the basic idea for creating a book. Uh, another quick way to just pound some stuff out if you want is click on your book actions button here to show a lot of other options and choose auto flow unplaced images. It's just gonna pound out all your images into your book more or less well laid out. You can go through double click on the image to move it around or zoom in to make it look just right, or click on an image to delete it if you want to put it in a different place. Move those in, and I'm going to put my iguana up here. So auto flow from the actions button in the bottom left corner is a great way if you just need to to get stuff out. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about creating custom uh, like presets, master pages, uh, so that you can basically design kind of a a default template kind of book just the way you like it. And once you've designed the book the way you like it, then each time you need to make a new book, you can just say auto flow unplaced images and it'll fill in all your images for you um, into this book that you've already designed once a long time ago. Um, so auto flow unplaced images, do be aware though, if you have more images than pages, it will start adding pages. So notice here it's added 11 more pages or 12 more pages that it didn't have before. So just be aware of that you may want to go through and delete them. When you are finished kind of laying out your book, you can buy the book uh, up here in the top right. Apple will ask for your Apple ID, um, credit card information, things like that, and they'll ship it to you. I've bought these myself. They are really high quality. Um, you won't be disappointed. Uh, just be sure that your images are high enough resolution. If it's not good resolution, if it's going to print poorly, there will be a little warning symbol up here in the top corner of your image, a little yellow warning symbol saying that your image isn't big enough to print properly. So put a different image in the book or spec blurry images. If you're not sending it to Apple, you can click the print button and either print it yourself or go to save as PDF here. And you could save it for yourself or uh, save it and then take it to a print vendor. That's it for the basic workflow of making a book. Uh, make use of all those great images that you've got. Put them together, print them out so that people will actually see them and enjoy them.